Yan, na-claim ko na siya. That's my visa. Well, hindi na ako ganun ka-excited kasi nakita ko na siya ng Tuesday. Tinay ko namang hindi tignan. Parang gusto kong antayin na makuha ko na lang talaga yung passport. Pero kung ginawa ko yun, feeling ko na baliw ako. <laughs> so happy. Anyway, mag-vlog ako about this. So, bye. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So, it's a Sunday and it's still the morning, I think around 10 o'clock. Well, I am really in a hurry to film this because since I posted my Korean visa on my Facebook page and shared it to the DIY travel group, I've been receiving a lot of inquiries of how I did it and how my Korean visa got approved with just 4,000 pesos in the bank. So before I discuss all of that, well, I just want to explain why I just don't want to answer each one of you and type it and answer without um, being careful because I really want to be careful. I don't want to give you false hope or false information. I don't want to spread anything like that fake news. So um, I don't want to be hearing that, oh, uh, someone told us that we will be approved if we just have 4,000 pounds in the bank. So this will be detailed and honest and i'm just gonna share you my experience of how my korean visa got approved so first a little disclaimer um i'm just going to share you my experience and that's what happened to me there is no assurance that um if you follow these steps you will be approved to and well it varies per person right i mean it's not the same for everyone and if you got your korean visa like easy peasy and hindi kayo nahirapan and you know i've heard stories like that like it's their first time to go out of the country and it's south korea right away they had no problem at all applying for the korean visa well this is not for you because you really don't need this you don't have to watch anymore also, since I told you that I'm in a hurry filming this and sharing it with you all guys because you've been waiting for my answer, um, this will be just a plain vlog. I won't be editing it too much. Um, I won't be putting any music or funny things. So um, this will be divided into eight. My disclaimer is already finished. And then my backstory like, and also my... Um, what I learned from learning the Korean uh, from what I learned from getting the Korean visa and um, my status as a traveler and what else the process and yeah I'm gonna share those well there are seven though I have a cheat sheet here <laughs> it's difficult to look at them while filming so yeah Oh, I'm gonna show you how to check your status online as well. So sit back and relax and hang on. I hope you'll finish this video. And if it's too long already, I might cut it into two so you won't be so um, bored. And I wore my Take Me to Seoul shirt because I'm going there finally. Okay, let's start. So a little backstory. Um, it did not... Um, I did not have it so easy. Um, I was supposed to go to South Korea last year. I've already booked a round trip ticket. Though things happened and I was not able to go there. Um, first, I booked too much seat sales and um, I realized the budget was not enough because I traveled to Hong Kong and Macau with my mother and sister and I somehow paid for them. And then I also went to Vietnam and Cambodia and then Japan happened so I was not able to budget really well and I was not able to go also the second reason is I got denied so I did not tell this to some of my friends I actually lied to them well sorry if I lied to you I think that's because I thought you're gonna judge me but I told some of my friends some of my really close friends that I got denied well it's not really a good news to be sharing to everyone so I did not shout into the world and announce that I got denied 
though that was a very painful experience and I got scarred <laughs> really I it was so painful so I'm gonna share my status last year and why I was denied um I just well I've I have my business I have a travel and tourist business aside from my full-time job which is teaching English to Koreans so I quit from my job time to time to focus on my business especially on summer so um, I quit from my job of two years from my employment of two years around March to focus on my business because it's summer and it's a traveling tourist business and then I got hired into another company by June and I applied for the visa in August so I've only been employed for two months that time though I asked a favor from my HR to fix something in the COE and make it a year she agreed though I'm not sure if she really supported me um, my business did not have proper documents that time I just had the DTI registration and barangay though I don't have I didn't have the mayor's permit yet and the BIR and the ITR so I could not um, register or I could not apply for the visa as a businessman because I did not have the um, enough documents and then what else um, I s just started my savings account around around April because I'm not really the saving kind of person you know all your life even if you've been employed you only had your payroll accounts and it just served us like the channel of your salary that once it's your payday you just withdraw all your money and then spend it and just wait for another payment I was that kind of person I mean why do we need I did not really believe in banks why do we need to save our money in the bank well aside from you have bills to pay you can just invest it somewhere I believed in investing more than saving so um, there I learned that bank accounts are really important when applying for visa or for loans for everything so if you don't have a bank account now you should start saving and also show money does not work well aside from the maturity of your bank account yeah they see how long have you been handling or managing your bank account and um the activity that you have in the bank like may pumapasok and then may lumalabas kung gaano kadalas and then sh yeah show money does not work because they also look at the ABB the average daily balance which is so so important most people don't know about that I did not know about that before because another reason why I got denied last year was I borrowed around 30 or 40 thousand from my sister and then 10 thousand from a friend and then put it in the bank wow my my balance was like 60,000 or 70,000 pesos but my ADB I can't remember how much my ADB was but I'm sure that it was not that good of an amount and yeah average daily balance they um, I don't know how to explain it if it's if, and if it's a correct explanation but it's like they see how much really remains in your bank for three months and well I learned that we should always keep something in the bank well if you're planning to apply for the visa um, now even if well, I got money from somewhere like cash from the business I put it in the bank even if I have to enjoy it again the next day I just make sure that I go to the bank and let my account absorb that money even if it will not last because it counts I mean it counts in your bank account and what else mistakes was that um, aside from the bank account the employment um, oh yeah I haven't traveled anywhere when I applied for the South Korean visa for the first time no I am 
a traveler in the Philippines. I've been to so many places and I consider myself as a pro when it comes to traveling though I have not been anywhere outside the country and I was still motivated to apply for the Korean visa because just like what I've told you I've read some stories that it's their first time and they got approved uh, the South Korean visa even if they have not been to anywhere before so when my visa um, got denied it was really painful that because <laughs> Uh, my itinerary was already prepared aside from the round trip ticket though the round trip ticket I got was just on sale like I booked it for 1,000 one way around 2,000 round trip so I won't really cry about that and I don't I didn't have any hotel reservation yet I was I just looked at um, Agoda and then put the address on my um, application form so what I mean why it was painful was because I've already prepared my itinerary a complete plan like where will I go where will I eat how will I go there what bus will I take what train will I take so all of those were already prepared it's like I've been to Korea I have memorized um, the bus stops the duration of the um, the trip I have memorized everything in my mind and in my heart that I think I was a local Korean that time but when my Korean visa got denied I made an effort to forget all about that so now that my Korean visa got approved I, I don't have any itinerary yet because I really forgot about them and yeah so uh, whenever I see anything any post about South Korea I scroll really fast I don't want to see that like if someone is sharing that their visa got approved and it was easy peasy to them I was so bitter and I don't want to see that I don't want to see that that's a lie that's a lie so I was like that and then um, n now that we're done with my background story or backstory that I got denied last year and what I learned from it that I want you to learn from too um, now my status as a traveler is I'm a frequent traveler Wow it's so nice to hear that because um, I just started going out of the Philippines this year 2018 my first out of the country trip was in Vietnam Ho Chi Minh in February 2018 so um, when the IO when the immigration officer was asking me first time he said like that first time and I was like no I'm a very experienced traveler in the Philippines though your status as a traveler if you're going out of the country will be yes first time because I had no stamp in my passport yet and there the Vietnam got followed by Cambodia and then we went to Hong Kong, Macau and Japan. Japan happened. Well, I really did not have money to go to Japan that time but um, I was so blessed to have an aunt and sister living in Japan to su support us, support our traveling and you know Hindi talaga ako interesado sa Japan. I have little to no interest about Japan or traveling to Japan because I know it's expensive. Though I know it will be really helpful for me and in my status as a traveler if I will be to an OECD country. So um, remember um, there are 34 OECD countries like Australia, Austria, and joke lang hindi ko sila memorize lahat. So you should search that on Google if you've been to an OECD country because um, your application, I mean for first time travelers, it will take, or no, first time travelers, and even if you've been to other countries like South East Asian countries but it's not an OECD country, your application will take about five days or a week before um, it gets approved but if, if you've been to an OECD country like Japan, Korea, Italy, Austria um, it will only take you three working days so there now we will go to the process of my application okay so now we will go to the process 
and the requirements to apply for a Korean visa. So here is my Korean visa. So there, um, what are the requirements I submitted? First, I applied as a self-employed. My status is self-employed, though I do have a job now. But um, my job, like what I've mentioned earlier, I'm an ESL teacher, English teacher to Korean students. It does not really help us because, you know, it's easy to think that we will overstay in Korea and teach English and find our students there and live with them. So it's easy to think that that's why um, declaring that I have a sponsor in Korea, well, I can do that. I have some students who are willing to help me. That will not really help me or my, stat my application to be approved because it's very suspicious like we have someone supporting us from korea um i did not declare that i am employed because well i just got back too so um the requirements i filed or i submitted is first the application form um be required now to be computerized unlike last year that you can just write it so it's sh everything should be computerized so fill in the blanks it should be filled with answers and those blanks that you really cannot provide any answer or you don't have any of those like the blank that says if you're um, traveling with family I am traveling alone so I just put NA NA you know that I know you have read about that so if you don't have any answers to those questions always put an NA so don't leave anything blank unless it is stated there that you should not write anything in that space. So application form and then the picture, the South Korean um, visa picture. Though I, I think it's just a 2 by 2 but just tell the studio you're going to that you need the um, picture for South Korean visa. Well, I got mine at Tronics Mega Mall 5th floor though uh, because it's really near to the agency where I went to and then so application form picture your passport the original passport and then um, since I've been to an OECD country oh no passport and then the next one I'm, I'm saying this according to um, yung pagkakasunod sunod nila so remember First is application form and then the picture because you're going to attach it. Do not staple it. It should be paste. Okay? Paste to your application form. And then um, your passport and then the copy of page 2. This is the page 2. Okay? So you have to um, photocopy this. It will be the whole page because your signature is in the next page. So that's the third one or the fourth one and then I since I've been to an OECD country I had to um, photocopy my Japanese visa Wait, I'm going to show you mm. okay so this is my Japanese visa and then the stamp upon arrival is here so I had to photocopy the, the whole page because they require not just the photocopy of an OECD country visa but also the stamp that you have used your visa because well I think if you have a visa of an OECD country and you were not able to use it it does not help at all that's what I think but I'm not sure about that and then um, supporting documents since I am self-employed I had to give the photocopy of my DTI registration and then mayor's permit and my ITR well if you have been to an OECD country and you are a frequent traveler you are exempted you don't have to give your ITR though because uh, my bank account only had 4,000 pesos. I did submit my ITR as well, which is 1701. For employed people, that's 2316 ITR. Um, BAR form 2316. For us, self-employed, is 1701. So, there. 
Okay. Um, DTI registration, um, mayor's permit, oh, I forgot, bank statement for three months. You should go to your bank and ask for them to print out your bank statement for three months. I submitted June, July, August, and then I even asked a favor to um, the teller to print until just August 24th something like that because I had huge amount of money in the bank that day so it reflected in my bank statement though the bank certificate came and I forgot that um, they will show how much the balance of your bank account is um, present time so you cannot ask them not to show it because I think there's a serial number in the bank certificate and it's even um, the page sorry I cannot show you because I've already submitted it everything that you will submit to the agency or to the Korean visa will not be returned to you so make sure that um, if they said it should be photocopy you should just submit the photocopy not the original one but for bank certificate and bank statement it should be original so um, the bank certificate has your branch and how long you've been keeping money in that bank um, their signature telephone number email and then the amount your your balance today is there it's written in the middle of the page and it's also written in the edge of the page so um, my ADB was around 25,000 so wow I was so glad when I saw the ADB but when I saw my balance it was just 4,000 pesos <sighs> well why I only had 4,000 in the bank um, I suppose I used to keep huge amount of money in the bank well it's my it's not um, something I'm supposed to spend it's the bank's I uh, know it's the business money I don't know if you can hear a baby crying but oh, condo living not very soundproof all right so going back I had to pause because a baby is crying in the neighbors neighborhood <laughs> so I'm um, going back to the bank certificate and um, why I only had 4,000 in the bank um, I used to save um, all of my money in the bank even if it's a huge amount of money though you know there's been some instances like recently there were some system glitches like your money being transferred to other person's account and your account getting or receiving a huge money from somewhere you don't know and then the next day they will fix it or it might take three days so that was scary and also um just recently i've been a victim of voice phishing and um fraud so someone um, attempted to get or to use my credit card and buy something really expensive from an appliance store so um, I do not really want to save a huge amount of money in the bank anymore though um, I still make it to a point that it's not zero cuz you know um, to be honest I've already forgotten about my trip to Korea this year cuz um, it's now September what date is it now I think it's September 9th now and my trip to Korea is on October 17th and before I go to Korea I have two countries I'm going to so within a month I am traveling to three countries so I was preparing to go to the second country I'm going to which is I'm going to say um, I was supposed to go, to go to Bali I have already round trip tickets and I have booked a hotel there they're all paid and um I was preparing for that trip I was preparing to ask my boss for a leave because I should tell him for a month at least because he might not approve so I might resign that's why I am giving a month before um, my trip to Bali so while I was thinking of um, asking for his permission and I was also busy paying taxes for my business and then paying condo I was so so busy that I thought that oh I like being busy <laughs> why um, why not try and apply for a South Korean visa because my requirements are already complete it's 
all just sitting in my cabinet they're all complete and even if my bank certificate only had 40,000 that will be the only problem and I thought ano ba kung mawawala sa akin kung di ako ma-approve eh nasaktan naman na ako last year so okay lang kay kakayanin ko ulit and uh, parang ano mawawala sa akin 700 pesos from the agency if I won't be approved so at least I tried because I have round trip tickets though they I got them uh, on sale as well I got them 2,300 per pesos for round trip tickets and I already booked hotel in Nagoda for this is for South Korea I already pre-booked a hotel in Nagoda though you know you can cancel them um, I can cancel it until October 13 so before I cancel it why not try and um, apply for a South Korean visa though I was not really prepared financially emotionally everything I was not prepared I just wanted to try it one more time and then I was thinking that if this will not be approved that's it I give up Korea I'm not going there anymore because I tried and I've been hurt so many times <laughs> so ayun um tinay ko lang talaga Alam mo yun, eh, ko ba, parang, hindi ko ako makakarelate kayo, parang, um, I was not expecting a positive result, because I was not ready to handle the positive result, result, but I don't want to hear a bad news as well. I don't want to have a negative result as well. Hindi ko alam if you've ever been denied and if you have the same experience and feeling so um i submitted my requirements on a thursday though it's my break time it's around 4 p.m in the afternoon yeah 4 p.m in the afternoon so i went uh, my office is in san miguel avenue ortigas and then i walked all the way to mega mall though it's not really far <clears throat> i went to mega mall on my break time and submitted all my requirements thinking that they can submit it on Friday the next day though when I went there they told me it's too late that um, they're um, the applications they're going to submit for Friday are already filed and complete so my application will be submitted on Monday and <laughs> wow that takes so much time it it's like I'm gonna wait for a week as well even if I oh, I am a frequent traveler and I'm just supposed to wait for three days so um, and then I realized so after submitting okay I went everyone's asking where I went I went to I hope it will focus there travel pros that's the agency that um, processed my or submitted my application travel pros um, as a mega mall fifth floor I really did not want to um, promote them because I'm not being paid and I also have a travel agency though they're really good I mean the one who processed our Japanese visa is Rally Tours it's also mega mall fifth floor though they're always crowded I mean it's not their fault that people are flocking their agency and they don't smile at all and it's like they don't want to talk to anyone anymore so w one time I was just walking in mega mall and then I saw travel pros and then I saw some reviews about them and they're really good um, so I really recommend travel pros fifth floor mega mall building B so I went there and then they reviewed my application and it's well organized so pagkakasunod sunod niya well I'm not the first time um, I mean it's not my first time to apply for the visa so alam ko yung pagkakasunod sunod I reviewed it and there was no problem until she saw my she saw my bank uh, certificate and it's just 4,000 pesos na pakamot ulo din si ate so kahit ako I was not really sure about that cause wala pa talaga ako nakikita or nababasa na na-approve na 4,000 lang yung pera nila sa banko I mean may nakita kong 20,000 15,000 but nothing less than 10,000 and so um I still submitted it and um, pagbalik ko sa office, I realized na yung na-submit ko ang application, may isang blank na kulang, hindi ko nasagutan. Kasi, um, yun sa passport details, saan mo kinuha, um, country of your passport, I put Philippines. And then next to that, merong, 
sa mo nakuha yung passport mo, place of uh, I forgot po anong ano yun. But it should be yung DFA NCR East, something like that. Ito, yung nandito sa part na to sa ilalim. Yun, hindi ko siya nalagyan. And then, wrong number pa niya lagay kong telephone number. So, I went uh, the next day or on a Saturday. And then, nagulat ako kasi I thought um, hindi pwede erasures. Because last time when I went to the Korean embassy, it was so strict that if you had a mistake, you had to print out another one. So, I brought a USB stick for them to print out another one. But they told me that um, they're not accepting USB stick. So, they just put a white out and then asked me to um, handwrite the correct ones. And I was so nervous. Talagang pwede ba? Pwede ba talaga? Kasi baka hindi nila tanggapin na computerized and then may handwritten and then they said no they're not strict so wow that's a really big difference of last year and this year so um i think um more on positive things yung nangyari nung napunta sa agencies yung paghahawak na application compared to going straight to um the embassy because when i applied in the embassy last year hindi yung mga um, hindi required na requirements the required requirements. So, yung mga wala sa list of requirements, like yung cover letter explaining bakit wala kang ITR or kung bakit ganito ka, ganyan ka, they did not accept that last year. So, um, wala silang pake kung anong apela mo, kung ano yung pag nakita ng guard, sa guard pa lang kasi titignan nila yung application mo, pag nakita niya ng guard na may extra paper doon na hindi naman kailangan, uh, alisin nila yan ng walang pakundangan kahit anong pakiusap mo. So, in my um, application, so this is the very important thing, one of the important things, I think, I included a cover letter. So, I was not really sure if they will include that or if they will remove that. But when I went there, I begged at not to remove it because it, it, it's the application, it's an explanation letter explaining why I only have 4,000 in the bank. So, I explained that, um, I used to manage, I've been managing my account for quite a long time now and I used to put huge amount of money but then I've been a victim of fraud so I do not trust banks now and I put my money some, somewhere else and it's not in the bank and then I put in the second paragraph I think that um, I hope they'll consider my travel um, experiences, previous trips, like I, I said I've been to this country, this country, that country and I returned in the date that I have declared I had no problem um, financing my trips so medyo arrogant yung dating but you, I had to be um, straightforward and tell them why they should approve me because yeah I've been to several countries and then in the last paragraph I because I followed a template of a cover letter I saw somewhere online and then the third paragraph is explaining why I want to go to South Korea I said that I really love their food Korean dramas k-pop and I really want to go there and I have um, started a travel vlog a travel vlog channel I put my YouTube link Facebook link and uh, our name and then I told them I want to feature South Korea and in the end I also mentioned that I want to I want to inspire Filipinos that it is not impossible for us to go to South Korea so it's a dramatic ending and then closing I put um, uh, thank you for reading my cover letter and I'm expecting for positive results. Ganon. So, I don't know kung... Kasi habang binabasa ni ate sa agency yung cover letter ko, medyo napapataas yung kilay niya. So, I'm not sure if it sounded rude or what or too straightforward. But whatever it is, it worked. So, cover letter. They will only accept your cover letter if um, may kulang ka, may kulang sa requirements mo. For me, I did not, I did not lack anything. Yung pera lang talaga sa ano sa bank account. That I was so happy because nung nakita kong inistable na ni ating requirements ko, mababasa na nila yung cover letter ko. So 
Um, to all those thinking na, ah, na-approve siya kasi naka-Japan na siya, so no. I, there's no assurance that you will be approved if you've been to an OECD country. I've read someone, I mean, habang nag-aantay ako ng resulta, nababaliw ako, nagkakaantay ng resulta ng visa ko, nakabasa ako ng nag-post siya sa DIY na deny siya kahit nakapag-Australia na siya. Wow, that's Australia. And then, meron namang nakapag-London na pero hindi pa rin na um, na-approve. So, being to an OECD country does not really um, make you sure that you'll be approved 100%. Merong mga nakapag-Korea na noon na na-deny pa rin the second time. So, I'm not um, telling you to lose hope. I'm telling you hindi natin talaga alam kung ano yung basihan nila. Merong mga 100,000 yung pera sa bangko, pero nadi-deny. Merong 20,000 lang, pero na-approve. Ako nga, 4,000 lang na-approve. So, I'm, what I'm telling you is, um, huwag ka muna panghinaan ng loob. Huwag ka muna mag-isip na kung ano-ano. Just try. Kasi wala namang mawawala. 700 pesos yung mawawala. Pero ano yung magiging mo kung ma-approve ka, diba? Oh my God. So, ayun. Um, the duration... Just like what I've told you, if you've been to an OECD country, you have to wait for three days for your application to be processed. If it's your, if you're not a frequent traveler, you have to wait for five days. At dahil hindi na ako makatulog Monday, Thursday pa lang sinabmit ko na. So nagdaan yung weekend, hindi na ako makatulog, kakaisip. Pero Monday pa lang talaga nila na submit. Check na ako ng check online. I'm going to put the link below of how you can um, check your application online. And also, I'm going to include the video where uh, when I claimed my passport. And there. So, Monday nila say nabmit. Choose Monday, Tuesday. Check na ako ng check online. Um, nakala Monday, wala pa rin. Wala ko nakikita online. Parang hindi, hindi pa nila nare-register yung application ko. Walang lumalabas na result under my name and my passport number. So, second day, Tuesday, may lumabas na and the status is application received. Wednesday, ito na, baliw na, baliw na ako. Hindi na ako nakakatulog. 4 a.m. ako natutulog. Kakaisip kung ano bang gagawin ko, ma-approve ako or what. Um, Wednesday morning, 11 a.m. Before ako maligo pa sa office, nag-check ako. Application received pa rin. So, walang nangyayari. Hindi nagbabago. Then, after ko maligo, paglabas ko, nag-check ulit ako. Ay, hindi. Check ba ako? Hindi, hindi na ako na beach. Ay, hindi. Nag-check pa rin ako after ko maligo. So, application received pa rin. Pagdating ko sa office, nag-check ako, under review na siya. Oh my gosh, kinakabahan na talaga ako. Kasi bakit under review? Hindi ba approved agad yung lalabas after na application received? Tapos, um, that's around 2 p.m. So, nag-check ako ng 2pm, under review pa siya. May mga nabasa kasi ako, nag-check sila online ng under review. Tis, and then, after one hour, na approve change to approve na. So, nag-classy lang ako. Then, after 30 minutes, I checked online again. Around 2.30, approve na siya. Oh my gosh. Iyak, iyak talaga. Umiyak ako sa office. First thing ko, umiyak ng ganun. Kasi, ay, naiiyak ulit ako. <laughs> Sobra kasi yung, ano, yung roller coaster ng emotion na this, yung grabe talaga yung panahon. Hindi ako prepared ngayon. I mean, mag-isa ako. Hindi ako nakapag-ipon. But I got approved. Iba yung feeling na yung ang tagal-tagal mo inantay na punta na sa'yo. Though, ay nakala ko makatulog na ako na maayos after ko malaman na approved na ako. Pero hindi pa rin ako makatulog sa gabi kasi isip ako ng isip kung anong gagawin ko sa Korea. Imagine ako na imagine ng mga sasapingin ko na excited na ako. So, hindi pa na ako nakatulog na maayos. So, ayun. Um, yung waiting time ng result ng um, visa mo, I don't know kung ako lang ba to, pero sobrang nakakabaliw siya for me. Challenge ko yung sarili ko na hindi tignan online at i-claim ko na lang siya sa agency at na-surprise ko anong result pero hindi ko talaga kaya. Feeling ko talaga na baliw ako kung tiniis kong hindi tingnan online. So, ayun. I'm, go I'm going to share how to check your status online so you don't have to be nervous for a very long time. Kasi kung hindi ko siya chinek online, Friday ko pa siya malalaman. It took a week for them to get my passport again. So, there. Um, any questions? Suggestions? Feeling ko na sagot ko naman lahat where I applied, what I submitted. For those um, employed, we have different set of requirements. You have to submit 
yeah, application form to passport, um, photocopy of passport page two, and then your picture. But you have to submit your COE, Certificate of Employment, that includes the phone number, email of your office, and how long you've been working there. Magkano sa mo? I'm not sure if that's included. And you have to submit your 2316 ITR. What else? I forgot. So you can check online your requirements, and I think you already know that. So, ayan. Medyo nagmamadali akong ma-upload to para sa mga nagaantay sa inyo. So, I hope nakatulong. And um, please, don't forget to subscribe. Kung nakatulong siya at nasagot ko naman yung mga tanong niyo, please subscribe. Please, please, please. And I'm going to be uploading a lot about Korea because I'll be traveling there next month. I'll be posting a travel guide and like where to eat, where to stay, what to, transportation to take. So there, I think that's it. And if you have, if there are questions that I was not able to um, answer, just put the questions below, comment down below, and I'll be answering them. And please subscribe, okay? Bye!